1915 hours. Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Find out who our latest visitor is, Barlow. You know how I hate to be disturbed. Colonel Withers shot Mrs. Peel a significant glance. She took the hint and turned to follow Barlow from the lamp room of the lighthouse. At the head of the stairs, she paused. So you didn't know Mr. Guthrie, Colonel? That is correct. Then I don't suppose you knew his friend Frederick Williams, either. Probably not. You'd better ask Barlow. You rely very much upon Barlow. He deals with the trivialities, Mrs. Peel. Trivialities. Thank you, Colonel. Mrs. Peel left the Colonel and began the descent of the 365 stairs. Halfway down, she paused and looked out of the window. There was a lighted cigarette resting on the window ledge. Mrs. Peel noted that she wasn't alone on the spiral stairway. Then she heard it. The unmistakable sound of a gun being loaded. Mrs. Peel, without looking round, hurried on. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed and Mother are quite unaware of Mrs. Peel's impending fate, and how it is all done by mirrors. <laughs> Mrs. Peel's investigations into the troubles at the Carmatic Research Centre had led her to the lighthouse on the cliffs. She'd been aware instantly of a strange atmosphere of distrust and she was quite sure the place was connected with the sudden deaths that had taken place in the neighbourhood. Colonel Withers had interviewed her in the lamp room at the top of the tower. He'd not been at all helpful, and Mrs. Peel had been more or less dismissed. Knowing she was being watched, with more calmness than she felt, Mrs. Peel descended to the base of the stairs to find that there was a new visitor, the girl she'd seen through the telescope. I do hope I have arrived at the right time. Um... Well, you, you see that... I've only that got is... the one suitcase, but it is rather heavy. Um, 364, 365. Phew, done. I must say the year passes more quickly on the way down. Uh, I really am sorry, Miss Marshall, but I don't think the Colonel will, oh, will see you. Of course the Colonel I... will see me, and of course I'm going to stay. I'd hardly arrive with all this stuff otherwise. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you can help me. Can you make sense of it all? I'm Pandora Marshall. I arranged weeks ago to interview Colonel with us. He agreed and asked me to stay here as his guest. He agreed to let me investigate all his developments. Uh, Mrs. Peel has nothing to do with all this. That's uh, quite true, Miss Marshall. I'm a stranger here myself. Oh, then I... Uh, the Colonel is a very busy man. He didn't seem very busy when I left him. Barlow glared at her. Emma Peel ignored the look and went on. And he does seem inclined to forget things. He told me to ask you if you knew Mr. Williams. Oh, look, I'm sorry, but I'm getting nowhere fast. If I could just speak to Mr. Barlow. Oh, but you are. This is Mr. Barlow. Mr. Barlow? But surely, I... I mean, you are the Mr. Barlow who wrote me this... Pandora Marshall produced a letter from her rather large handbag. You agreed to all the arrangements, to me staying here, meeting the Colonel. That is your signature, isn't it, Mr. Barlow? Um, yes, yes, of course it is. Oh, uh, you, you really must forgive me. I, I'm afraid I owe an apology. I must be getting as forgetful as the Colonel. Um, uh, Ketridge. Yes, Mr. Barlow? Uh, show Miss Marshall to one of our guest cabins. I, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. Mistakes can happen. But when do I get to see the Colonel? Uh, just as soon as he's free. We'll get you settled in first. Oh, very well. Goodbye, Miss Marshall. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, what line of business are you in? <laughs> well, it's not unlike yours. I investigate developments. Maybe we'll meet again. Goodbye for now. <laughs> Outside, in the sea air, Emma Peel paused by the side of her car and looked up at the tall granite building. 
Then she made a decision. She climbed into her car and drove along the cliff road towards the research station. Inside the lighthouse... Is Miss Marshall safe in her guest room? Yes, she's all right. What happens now? I've spoken to the colonel over the blower. He's coming down. We must hold an emergency meeting in his office here on the ground floor. There's got to be some quick thinking done, Catridge. Some very quick thinking indeed. But Miss Pandora Marshall wasn't as easy to fool as all that. She watched from the chink in the door of her room as the three men moved into an inner office. Then she slipped out and up the stairs with energy which would have made even Emma Peel raise an eyebrow in appreciation. She passed the spot where Emma had seen the lighted cigarette. It was no longer there. Eventually, she found the lamp room and gently opened the door. No one in here. Pandora examined the room swiftly, then saw the telescope. She moved towards it, peered through it. Hmm. Powerful. Oh, there goes a car. Mrs. Peel's, I think. I wonder... Now, if what the colonel says is true... Pandora examined the tripod of the telescope more closely. There was a black box attached to one section. She opened it. Inside the box was a dial marked Activate, a speaking tube, a small receiving speaker, and a coil of flex with a distinctive-looking plug at one end. Yes. Yes, it figures out all right. Now, where would this plug in? It was the work of a moment to find a socket leading to the lamp itself, which, because of its distinctive shape, was obviously the right one. Pandora plugged in and switched on the activate switch. Now, find something, or somebody on the cliffs, and I should be able to hear every word they say. She peered down the telescope, focusing it on the cliff. She picked up two figures. They were Major Sparshots and Watney. They were standing next to an open car. Totally baffling, Major Sparshot. I hope you're not as convinced as you are, Watney. The area was absolutely deserted, and yet I heard voices. Well, Mr. Watney, we went sure through right. these woods with a fine tooth comb. Pandora adjusted the lens right onto the windscreen of Watney's car. Now we'll see. Oh, dear. Uh, then we must have missed something very vital. The glare from the lamp shone through the telescope and hit the driving mirror of the car. Pandora spoke into the speaking tube. Boo. Down on the cliffs, Watney wheeled round. <laughs> What the devil was that? What the devil was what? I thought I heard someone call out just behind me. Oh, me. you're not hearing things again, are you? Come on, you need a drink. Wee. Oh. Wee. There, there, surely you heard it. Gulls crying overhead. Come on, I'm thirsty. Sparshot persuaded the mystified Watney to get into the car and they drove away. Pandora smiled to herself as she swung the telescope back along the cliff road. She picked up yet another car. It was Mrs. Peel's. Mrs. Peel was checking the area, and like Watney and Sparshot, had found nothing. Pandora focused the telescope onto the windscreen of Emma's car and grabbed the speaking tube. Mrs. Peel, don't be alarmed. I'm talking to you by means of a visual audio telescope from the lighthouse. There's something very funny going on. I knew it when I first arrived. You see, I've met the real Mr. Barlow before, and this one is not the same man at all. Mrs. Peel... Mrs. Peel, can't you hear me? Peering down the telescope, Pandora could tell that her message had not got through to Mrs. Peel at all. She hastily made several adjustments to the focusing. Down on the cliff's edge, Emma Peel was about to get into the car when she heard... Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel? What the devil? Who is it speaking? It's me, Pandora Marshall. What? Oh, where are you? Where... I'm here at the... The message was cut off quite suddenly. The reason was that Barlow and Kettridge had returned to the lamp room. Kettridge placed a large hand over Pandora's mouth. He jammed a loaded gun into her ribs. Oh, <coughs> don't move oh. or it'll be your last. The activate switch. There, that's got it. Who are you trying to get at? I see. Mrs. Peel out there on the cliffs. Well, it might be a good idea at that. Mm-hmm. And she's calling someone on her car telephone. Switch on again. We may learn everything we want to know. On the cliffs, Emma was indeed using the car telephone. She was calling Watney at the research centre. Hello? Hello, Watney, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Mrs. Peel. Watney, uh, where are you? I'm out on the cliff head, on my way back from the lighthouse. There's something very, very funny going on. Uh, what do you mean, funny? Well, I, I thought I heard a voice. A voice out of thin air. You heard it? Oh, that's great. It means I'm not mad. 
Now, uh, hold on, Mrs. Peel. I'm coming out straight away. I'll be waiting. So you did get through to her, Miss Marshall. I... I didn't tell her anything. Catridge, get downstairs. Get your motorcycle and get after the woman down there. I'll hold her. Try and lure her to the edge. Right. Leave it to me. Now, listen. No, you listen to me. Do everything I tell you. Repeat every word or else. Understand, Miss Marshall? A short while after that, Mrs. Peel, waiting by her car for Watney, was again aware of a curious glare on the windscreen. It was then that she heard the cry again. Help. Who are you? Where are you speaking from? Please help me. Over here. here. The cliff edge. But I can't see anyone. Here. Here, I'm over here. Please help, help me. Help. I'm coming. Just keep help. calling. Help. Mrs. Peel, clearly thinking that Pandora must have fallen over the edge of the cliff and was clinging on somewhere below, made her way forward. Suddenly, Ketteridge appeared as though from nowhere. He roared his bike down the path, skidded it neatly at Emma Peel's feet. She fell backwards with a startled scream. Ah! She lost her balance, clutched wildly, but couldn't get a grip, and toppled over the edge of the cliff. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen. <laughs> <laughs> 